Welcome to the Tech Ed Podcast, where we visit with leaders who are shaping, innovating, and disrupting technical education. People who are not afraid to think differently, not afraid to try something new, all with the goal of securing the American dream for the next generation of STEM and workforce talent. Our guest on this episode of the Tech Ed Podcast is Mr. Mike Reeder, president of Precision Plus. Now, headquartered in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, Mike's company is a contract manufacturer of precision machine components. He leads a great company, but I am telling you today that that is not the reason that we invited him to join the Tech Ed Podcast. There are plenty of contract machining companies whose presidents would love to join us on this platform. Mike is here today because he will offer insights on advanced manufacturing, on workforce development, on company culture, and on building a super glue grade bond with his regional educators. Hello, my name is Matt Kirkner. I am the host of the Tech Ed Podcast, and we have a couple questions. Why would somebody call themselves their company's chief problem solver and workforce development advocate? You will know the answer by the time we are done today. How is our guest, as he puts it, changing and correcting public perception of U.S. manufacturing? How is he helping to develop the next generation of manufacturing professionals in his region? Now, if you've heard the words Swiss machining and always wondered what it was, if you are as curious as we are about why a contract manufacturer would have a team member with a title like director of education right on staff, if you are an industrial employer looking for a roadmap to building world-class relationships with your local high schools, community colleges, and universities, if you are curious about any of these, you will be hanging on every word of this podcast. As I mentioned, our guest today is Mike Reeder, President, Chief Problem Solver, and Workforce Development Advocate of Precision Plus. Mike, it is so great to have you on the Tech Ed Podcast. Matt, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And we're really, really supportive of your organization and all the great things you are doing in technical education and in advanced manufacturing as well. So I can tell you, I've been really looking forward to a robust discussion. I want to dive in with this first question. Uh, You know, if you look at the area of, say, Milwaukee or southeastern Wisconsin, where your company is located, for years, decades, maybe even a century, we have been called the machining capital of the world. The area is known for a wide variety of contract machining and manufacturing companies. So in that sea of all these great companies, what is it that makes Precision Plus unique? Well, Matt, you know, you hear about all the big brand names, Oshkosh Corp, Mercury Marine, Snap-on Tools, the Manitowoc Crane, and the shipbuilding operations, and the list goes on and on. Those are well-recognized names around the world. But behind them, is an array of specialized contract manufacturers like Precision Plus that provide some of the specialized components that go into those systems. So instead of making a final product, we make the components. Many of you may remember the old BASF commercials from from years ago. I'm dating myself. We don't make the car. We make the car run better. And so uh, as a contract manufacturer, we specialize in the very small end of the machining spectrum, anywhere from you know, 20 thousandths in diameter parts up to two and a half inches. So when we get up above an inch and a half or two inches in diameter, that's a big part for us. The, the vast majority of the parts come off the machines, half inch uh, diameter and less, but very, very tight tolerance and very intricate details in many cases. So tight tolerance, intricate details, you use the word specialized several times in that answer. So obviously what you're doing is, is particularly unique in that sense. You know, as you and I have talked, Mike, and as we've learned about your company, I know this whole idea of Swiss machining is integral to your manufacturing processes. That may be a term that isn't necessarily familiar to our audience, or maybe they've heard it, but they don't know exactly what it is. What can you tell us about what Swiss machining is and why it's important? So when you think of Swiss machining, think Swiss watches and uh, the mechanical movements. And the Swiss folks back in the 1870s, came up with a better mousetrap to make, you know, the winding stems, which are very long and small diameter and very precise, as well as the screws that hold all the movement pieces together. And so in a conventional lathe, you push your material out or you set your material out to establish a length, and then you start your machining operations. What happens if you get beyond two and a half, three times diameter to length ratio, and you bring your cutting tools in there, your turning tools in there, the material will want to deflect because of the tool pressure. 
And therefore, you wind up with chatter, tool bounce, material flexes out of the way. And uh, you can't make real close tolerance cuts with that. So the Swiss came up with a solution years ago in the automatic lathe area where they put a, a support guide bushing right in front of the cutting area. And so then you've got a, a headstock with a collet that's holding it. And as it turns, the headstock will move forward in advanced material into the cutting tool itself. So you can make real long, skinny parts. And because you've got the support right there at the cutting surface, it all works much better. And so that's what Swiss machining is. They still make Swiss machines in Switzerland. We have a, an array of those machines still in our building. But, you know, the Germans and the Japanese have started to dominate that space in the last 20, 30 years. So it's interesting you get a Swiss machine that's made in Japan. Right. Absolutely. That's, that, is, that is interesting. And I've got to believe, regardless of whether that machining center, that Swiss machining center comes from Japan or Germany or from Switzerland, there's a tremendous amount of education and learning that needs to take place among your employees in terms of understanding this technology, understanding how to put it to work, how to create parts that, that are conforming, that your customers love, and so on. As part of that, I'm going to guess, you just named someone to the position of Director of Education and Business Development. Not too many companies have somebody with a title called Director of Education. What was the idea behind this new position? This position started out as a thought in October of 2012. I was watching, uh, I think it was a 60 minutes broadcast, and they had a number of manufacturers on talking about the skills gap and the labor shortage. And, uh, you know, I'm watching that going, oh, I know exactly what these people are talking about because we're living it every day. And then they brought a professor from the Wharton School of Business in Pennsylvania on, and he basically said, listen, you manufacturers are a bunch of whining people that are not willing to pay a wage to attract talent that you seek. Hmm. And so that was like the needle going across a record player for me. I disagreed with this gentleman profusely, but I, I took that as inspiration to say, you know what, maybe we're not doing all that we can. We expect people to show up at our door interested in machining careers when we've done nothing to introduce them to those careers. So back in the fall of 2012, I brought in an educator by the name of Barry Butters from the Elkhorn Area School District. Barry and I went to school together a long time ago in high school, and uh, he was a math teacher. But when he came through on a tour, he could quickly see what was going on. And ultimately, I was able to hire Barry as my first director of education back in 2013. He was with us for two years and then transitioned that off to another person from the education as Barry transitioned back. So this isn't a new idea. This is just a new person. We did take the second director of uh, education, left us after three years to go back to education again. And then I was able to bring on Stefan Brusky, who has spent his lifetime working in and around manufacturing, both in the job shop area, as well as for the machine tool builders. And so we are very blessed to have him on board because he's a natural educator, although he's, he's not spending time in a formal classroom setting, but he grew up in the business and is passionate about sharing what he knows with particularly the young and passionate individuals we've brought on board. So Stefan Brusky serving in the role of Director of Education for Precision Plus, a very unique position, obviously demonstrating your organization's absolute commitment to continuous learning. You know, we think that's going to be really, really important. Manufacturing technology is evolving at a rate that is unforeseen. It's one of the reasons that we created the Tech Ed Podcast to make sure that our educators, that our industrial employers are staying on the cutting edge of, of these changes. I'd be really curious, Mike, given your commitment to education, understanding that we need to educate our employees as manufacturing technology changes, what technologies would you point to that over the next five or 10 years, our educators should be thinking about as they prepare their students for future careers in precision machining and advanced manufacturing? Well, certainly automation and the integration of automation into existing systems is going to be incredibly important. So those people need to understand motion control, mechanical systems, as well as electrical and software solutions, because you've got to bring so many different disciplines together. You know, everyone in the U.S. is trying to be the most competitive and cost conscious as they can, because we're competing with global businesses. And with that automation and with the higher level of equipment that's coming to play, what's happening is the lower unskilled positions are being lost. But at the same time, we're creating more 
high level, machine technicians, machine maintenance folks, automation folks, the programming and the troubleshooting that's required is far more complex today than it was you know, 20, 30 years ago. On the machine tool side, the advances have been absolutely mind boggling. We've got some parts with you know, 90, 100, 120 different features on them that go from bar stock to complete parts in essentially one operation. And so the technology is extremely powerful. And so there's been a shift in the manufacturers and the businesses like ours. We are looking for more higher level people than we are the unskilled these days. And so if you have it retooled in your education side of things, it might be time to consider that. And again, there's a, there's a lot going on there and we need some pretty smart people to drive all this equipment. And Mike Reeder, I think the key word that you use there is shift. We really are seeing a shift, are we not, in manufacturing technology? And, and to your really astute point, that is going to create a demand for a much higher skilled level of individual. Now, those jobs are higher skilled. Uh, in many cases, in many manufacturing operations, as we introduce automation, they may be safer. They may be incredibly more interesting. They will probably be higher paying, in fact, very likely be higher paying. So it's a, a shift that can really work to the benefit of those working in manufacturing, not just today, but working in manufacturing in the future. And working in manufacturing in the future is going to require that we continue to produce a workforce that is skilled in much, much different ways than maybe we did 10 or 20 years ago. I know you're not just standing by and watching that happen. You are integrally involved with your educators. Uh, you and I happen to meet through Dr. Brian Albrecht at Gateway Technical College, and I know you've been a tremendous supporter of that particular institution. Uh, you're an incredible partner to education. Not too long ago, you opened the Reader Precision Machining and Manufacturing Center at the Elkhorn campus at Gateway, not coincidentally, a center that bears your last name. That center, I'm told, represents the most modern and state-of-the-art CNC machining, manufacturing, and education technology. And it's designed to meet the training needs of your county, Walworth County, and the manufacturers that do business there. What can you tell us about the motivation behind stepping up in such a big way to partner with your community college and to create a project and make an investment like the one that you did? It goes back to, you know, what I was talking about in 2012, 2013. You can either stand on the sidelines and throw darts at the situation and say that it's everyone else's fault, or you can look in the mirror and say, you know, what can I do to, to help the situation? What can I do to change and improve the outcomes? And so I was in Brian Albrecht's year quite often talking about the IMET Center Racine and what a tremendous facility that is. And certainly that was primarily sponsored by SC Johnson. And just for the record, you know, my pocketbook is a little different than SC Johnson. But when it came down to what can we do in Elkhorn and in Walworth County, ultimately Dr. Albrecht came to me and said, Mike, what are you willing to do to make this happen? And he is a tremendous advocate for technical education, but also a fundraiser, as, as many of you may know. And so uh, his ask of me was, are you willing to cough up a quarter million dollars to help get this thing off the ground? Because we don't see anyone else stepping up. And uh, I had to think long and hard about that. It's a lot of money. But ultimately, I said, you know what? If we're going to be fully committed to this, it's time to step up. And so we did that. The school did as well. We also have helped put numerous pieces of equipment and technology into the building since then. You know, and this was not putting in for the facility hand-me-down equipment that's already spent 20 years in the production floor and looks like, you know, looks like it spent 20 years there. Now, this is brand new equipment. So we want to show those that are interested that there's a tremendous amount of technology that's needed. And here's where you can learn all about it right in our own backyard. And what a great example. You say that you use the words, Mike, it's time to step up. And certainly many people are stepping up with words. Many people are stepping up with ideas. It is another level of commitment altogether to step up with your financial treasure. And that is exactly what you did in supporting that great program at Gateway Technical College, certainly to the benefit of your community, of the manufacturers in your community, and maybe even most important to the students and the young people that are choosing careers, that are gaining those really, really important skills as they go through programs like CNC machinist, machine tool, and so on, and gaining those really, really important competencies and skills. So credit to you, credit to Precision Plus for making that investment and not just talking about the problem, certainly not just complaining about the problem, but really putting your effort 
and your financial resources behind helping to solve it. And that's doing phenomenal things at the technical, at the community college level as students seek tech diplomas, as they seek associate's degrees and so on. Now it's equally important, is it not? Maybe even more important in some ways to inspire young people as they're considering their career pathways. We know at the Tech Ed Podcast that some students will start turning off to certain career pathways literally as early as middle school where they're not even on the radar as they go through high school. So getting our workforce where it needs to be today and in the future in so many ways requires us to inspire young people toward careers in advanced manufacturing. I know you're doing plenty of work at that level as well. We know your partners at the Elkhorn High School. Tell us about your relationship with that high school and what you're doing to inspire young people toward careers in advanced manufacturing and particularly machining. Well, for those that are listening here today, the Elkhorn community to me is a, a prime example about what can happen when business and education come together to solve the problems at hand and to provide career exploration opportunities to these young adults. I've spoken in front of the school board. I've spoken in front of the entire administration. I've uh, had many meetings one-on-one with different educators. Everyone in the Elkhorn area understands that manufacturing is truly a wonderful career option for those that want to explore that. You don't know what that looks like until you step into it and, and you try, you know, a job shadowing program, a summer internship, a youth apprenticeship program during the school year. Uh, essentially earn while you learn. And I don't know that too many people can fault that. And, you know, for too many years, we have told all these young adults, go to four-year university, get a degree, any degree, you'll figure it out along the way. And we've put a lot of these young adults and families into lots of debt doing that. And so we want to try to get the students started as early as possible with, you know, hey, just open up our doors. We have done a manufacturing day event for the last, I think, probably eight years. Every fall during manufacturing month, we will open up our doors, we'll invite the community in, and we've got a lot of families that come in. It's not parents, it's not students, it's both of them coming in together. We've heard about this place, let's take a look at it. What does the facility look like? Is it dark, dirty, and dangerous? Like many people still have those stereotypical images in their head about manufacturing. I'll tell you, advanced manufacturing is not what it was 50 years ago. A lot of these shops are clean, well-lit, organized, places you would want to work yourself or have your children work at someday. And so with these young kids coming through, they're excited about what they see. And what we have come to determine is once they get to high school, a lot of their career path ideas are, are set, or at least they think they've set them. And so we've got to get them as early as possible because we want them to take all the, the STEM curriculum that they can. Project Lead the Way is the curriculum that they use at the Elkhorn School District. We've spoken in front of grade schoolers, middle schoolers, high schoolers. I'll tell you, the middle school kids are the most exciting to to meet with. They have raw and uninhibited emotion that is just fun to work with. And so we want to get them exposed to this early. And the Elkhorn School District and Joanne Pella and all the stuff that she does over there to help connect students and, and businesses, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. And and I love the characterization of those middle school students as having raw and uninhibited emotion as they go through their exploration of different career opportunities and and become inspired, at least some of them around careers in the world of advanced manufacturing. And I want to turn our sights now from the very early levels as we talk about middle school and high school students into what comes maybe after technical college or community college, or maybe a student that's going from direct high school into a four-year university. I happened to serve in my years as a chief executive of a couple different manufacturing companies before finding my calling in the world of education. I served in manufacturing and I served on the corporate board of the Milwaukee School of Engineering for about a decade. Now you've taken that to an entirely different level, actually serving on the board of regents of that institution. One of the questions I like asking those in manufacturing, people who are hiring engineering talent, whether that's a manufacturing engineer, an industrial engineer, an electrical engineer. As you look at higher ed, as you look at our graduate and our undergraduate programs in the field of engineering here across the United States, what would you say is missing most, Mike, in the undergraduate and graduate engineering programs today? Well, to me, the answer is is real easy. We've put so much emphasis on the classroom 
engagement. We fail to recognize that, you know, the hands-on experience trumps most anything that I've seen in the classroom. And we've sponsored a number of students at, at MSOE, and they have a, an annual career fair where they bring in a lot of the Wisconsin manufacturing elite. And as these students have walked around to find out what uh, some of these other big companies can offer them, they talk about their academic performance, and then they, they share with them that they've been in the field. They've done summer internships with us where they've actually worked on the machines, helped set up the machines, troubleshoot, even in some cases do some programming. And I'll tell you, I've been with some of these students as they've walked around and the recruiter's eyes on the other side light up. Oh my gosh, somebody that's got hands-on experience has actually done it. The best engineers in the world are those that didn't come straight out of the classroom and go to the drawing board. They're the ones that went up through the ranks and actually turned wrenches, cut metal, welded, all these things. And those life experiences cannot be replicated in the classroom. And so MSOE, in my opinion, hands down, the best educational system for just that, balancing life experience with the classroom. They do a great job. And I can't say enough about uh, what is going on up there. And I started out like you, Matt. I started in on the corporate board. And I'm very fortunate to be a member of the Board of Regents at MSOE. And I couldn't agree more, Mike, on the the whole topic of hands-on opportunities and experiences for engineers. And and I can tell you, looking back on the on my years of running manufacturing companies, the very, very best engineers that we had on the team were the ones that had some version of hands-on experience, whether they went to a polytechnic university or a university where they received that hands-on opportunity, received it through an internship worked in industry before they got to their engineering career, or went to a technical or community college first, and then went on to that four-year engineering degree to complete their education. That's so very important. And I think we look at all of the people that find their way into engineering pathways. They are there because they like understanding how things work. They like understanding how things are made. They're hands-on kinesthetic learners. And then in so many cases, We take them from high school and we stick them in a classroom where they learn theory for the first year or two before they really even get to engage in technology in so many cases. And I think we're going to see a disruption in the world of education, particularly higher education in that respect over the course of the next five or 10 years. You know, one of the guests that we had here on the Tech Ed podcast um, not too terribly long ago is uh, Dr. Sue Elsperman. Now, Sue is now the president of uh, the Ivy Tech Community College, the statewide system in the state of Indiana. She brings tremendous insight, though, and experience. She was the lieutenant governor of the state of Indiana for a period of time under Mike Pence as he was governor. And she is also a trained and educated master's degree engineer. And when she and I got onto this topic, almost the exact same discussion, Mike, her words were amen when we started talking about the absolute value of giving our engineers those hands-on kinesthetic experiences, not just in technical and community colleges, but in their four-year programs as well. So as we start to close out our time here with Mike Reeder, president of Precision Plus, a true ambassador for technical education, a true and genuine partner for technical education, I have one last question for you, Mike. I want to get into this topic of not just inspiring students towards amazing careers in advanced manufacturing, but also particular to your business, particular to precision machining, to Swiss machining. What are some of the exciting partnerships and projects that your team members will be able to work on as they go throughout their day and go throughout their career at Precision Plus? You know, every day is a a new experience. We've been spending the last couple of years working with a client on a bone drill for a cartilage replacement in your big toe of all things. And so if you go online and look at cartilage replacement, metatarsal drill, you're going to see some stuff that's pretty interesting. And uh, so we get an education in a lot of different areas. And so it goes from that to the dentist's office, well, all the equipment that they use between the uh, descaling systems, Cavitron descaling system from Dentsply, Serona, to the hand pieces, to the dental implant drills and fixation pieces really some neat stuff. We do a lot of stuff in the defense department, guidance control pieces for uh, air-to-air missiles and proximity switches for 60 millimeter mortar rounds. 
you know that when you're making these parts, our men and women in uniform have their lives on the line, and we want those pieces to perform flawlessly for them in the field, protect them and the freedoms that we have here in the United States. Thermal management systems is a big thing. All these data centers are trying to deal with how do you control the heat load coming from the new chipsets that go faster and faster. And so they're going from air-cooled chipsets and boards to liquid-cooled. So you think about these big you know, data centers with thousands upon thousands of racks, and they're going to liquid-cooled system, and they've got to be a non-spill, quick disconnect coupler. And so we are in that area as well. Fiber optics, putting a product up into satellite systems for communications. Uh, you don't want to be the guy that your dollar part just caused the satellite system for millions of dollars to fail. So uh, it's a fun thing for me every day to, to see uh, what new projects we could be working on. A fun thing for you and for your team members, of course, whether that's working on products that end up in the medical field, end up in fiber optics, end up in defense. That is one of the beautiful things I think about contract manufacturing is people don't always have an appreciation for how many different end users and end customers, even though you may be supplying somebody who's assembling that into a final product, and then that ends up in the market as something, conglomeration, if you will, of a number of different technologies and products, all the different ways that our contract manufacturers not only get to produce and manufacture amazing parts, but have such an integral part in the success of every single sector of our economy. So an incredibly rewarding thing that you get to do, an incredibly rewarding time today I think, Mike, for our audience here at the Tech Ed Podcast, you know, we are all about people who are innovating, people who are disrupting, people who aren't afraid to try something a little bit different. And Mike Reeder of Precision Plus is a perfect example of somebody who fits every single one of those criteria. So, Mike, thank you so much for spending time with us today on the Tech Ed Podcast. Thank you, Matt. I can't express my gratitude enough and also to all the technical educators out there like manufacturers who have had probably a, you know, almost second class citizenship, we don't have enough technical educators out there. And you look at the 220 licenses and uh, how valuable those are, you know, we got to find a better way to promote more careers in technical education as well. And so thank you for all that you do. If there's anything I can ever do to help any one of you in your journey, by all means, reach out to me. A great message for our technical educators from Mike Reeder. I could not have said it any better myself. And so with that, we will close out our time on today's Tech Ed Podcast. Thank you so much for downloading. Be sure to tune in next week. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Tech Ed Podcast. If you haven't already, subscribe, leave a review, and if you like this episode, share it with a friend. New episodes launch every Tuesday, so listen in next week.